Hi guys, so let's have a look at how do I straighten an image in Affinity Photo on the iPad. A fairly straightforward exercise, but it's one of those odd little tools that you may not find initially. Now we're going to align an image and according to the help file, there's only four steps to it. This idea on the iPad of straightening could be more correctly called aligning because you are in fact aligning the image to a perceived plane and it's quite tricky to get the hang of on an iPad especially an iPad mini so let's go ahead and do it as you can see there are only four instructions in the help file so let's delve into it firstly let's set up an image to start Select File, New, and select the photo preset. Usually the default will do. Set the orientation to Portrait. Click OK to create a blank workspace. Pinch it in to reduce the size a little bit. I like to be able to see the entire image on the screen, especially when you're starting out. You can enlarge it later on as you need to. OK, next open the Stock Studio and search for Tower. And guess what? There's lots of towers, but we'll use the Eiffel Tower, which is first in the top there, top left-hand corner of that um, display of images. Very nice. Add the image, add the Eiffel Tower image to your palette. You know how to do that. Hold the pen on the Eiffel Tower, and when it moves, drag it across to the palette. So the image is far too large. So set the anchor point to the center point. This is fairly important, otherwise you'll lose the image. Select the move tool. Lock the width and height lock so any resizing is uniform. And you're in the transform tool there on the right hand side, like a little square with another white square in it. Set the, set the lock on to the dimensions, width and height. Now drag the width down so it's a more usable size. This will reduce both the width and the height and center the image. It doesn't matter you've got lots of white space, we're going to use that. So center the image, perfect. Let's start with a tilted image. It's the easiest way to see this neat little tool at work. In this view, I've simply rotated the whole image slightly by two degrees. You can see it's still, you can see it's still anchored to the center, but in the rotation view there, well, I've got three degrees, that's all right. Put three degrees. And it tilts it slightly to the left, as though the Eiffel Tower is falling down. With a tilted image, select the crop tool from the toolbar. That's up the left hand side there, like those lines all squiggled together. The context toolbar shows on the lower part. You can see the arrow pointing to the toolbar. On that toolbar is a right facing arrow, and that's the one we want. Tap that arrow, and you can see, well it's a little triangle actually, but you can see the image lined up because the, the, um, the crop tool boundaries are showing there but we just ignore those we want that little right facing triangle that will take you to the next part of the context toolbar now i've got dark and set on there but you can tap that to set it off if you like look carefully and you'll see the straighten tool second option from the left the arrow is pointing to it so you've got thirds i guess that's an option then rotate then straighten and what I want to do is straighten it. There's no guesswork with this, really. And it's just one way of doing it. And there are lots of uses for this that you'll think of. If you use the tool quite a bit, then you'll remember it and you'll be able to come back to it. Now, enlarge the picture simply by pinching and pinching outwards so the image enlarges. So you can see the whole canvas and you can clearly see the guide I put in place to emphasize the Horolond horizontal line of the tower girder. Now you can see I've I've gone to guides and put a horizontal guide in there and dragged it down so it's just above 
that horizontal line of that major structural girder there. And you can see clearly there that the image is a little tilted to one side. It's not quite level. Now we're going to attempt to level that up. Now this is a lot easier than trying to rotate the image by hand. Next, you tap on the straighten tool. That's in the context toolbar. Nothing will happen, or seemingly so. Now carefully place your pen tip on the girder, don't lift it off, and keeping it so placed, draw it across the girder carefully following the line of the girder. Now you can see the example I've got there. When you lift your pen, the image will automatically straighten to that line and the line immediately disappears. Simple, that's the whole key to it. The image has automatically straightened and you can see from the guideline there that it has so straightened. You mustn't take your pen off the image during this process of drawing that line or it may well do strange things to the image. It will flip in some direction. In that case, simply tap the undo icon. You do have them displayed from the preferences menu, don't you? The undo and the redo little buttons down the bottom there. Makes life a lot easier when you've got those in place. Finally, you may have to do it more than once as you get it just right. And next, when you're finished, tap Apply to fix your changes in place. If you want to do more than one change, press Straighten, draw the line and let the image move. If you want to do it again, tap Straighten, draw the line, let the image move. You must remember that sequence, it won't work otherwise. And when you're finished, tap Apply. If you don't, as I mentioned, the changes will be lost. And there's the newly straightened image. It's an especially useful tool to use when you're trying to align an image to a particular design element. Now the Eiffel Tower is probably not a good image for that, but you may have an image that you want to, you might have two objects and you want to align perfectly one object with the side of another object. And it's a little difficult to get your image to move by doing it with the handles but you can do it this way. And that's all folks. Thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. Don't, for, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it.